So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I, I truly appreciate you being here. I know um, probably got better things to do on a night like this, but <clears throat> tonight we want to talk about a subject or I want to talk about a subject that was actually requested by members of, of Right Way Options to <clears throat> um, talk about position trading. Now, I characterize position trading as that little bit longer term trade, and they can go a long time. They can go weeks, months, and even years, depending on the trend. And there's a lot of folks out there interested in that kind of trading because of the, the speed of the market, the, the workload that they have, the um, they may be uh, busy at home or just, hey, they just don't want the lifestyle of sitting in front of a computer all the time trying to day trade or swing trade or those kind of things and they want something to slow things down a little bit to slow down that lifestyle so that's what we're going to talk about tonight that little bit longer term setup for a trade and we're going to use it um, talk about it with a strategy that's called the 3-8 trap now, all, everybody who's been here uh, knows this strategy, and we'll we'll go ahead and, and talk about it um, in real brief terms for folks that might be new. But it's actually a very, very simple strategy to be able to trade charts. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump right in to a chart, and I'm actually going to adjust. I was looking at travelers here at the end of the day. What a... What a <laughs> they got dealt a blow big time here. What I want to do here is I want to shut off a few uh, few things on here. I want to keep the chart very simple. And I'm actually going to shut off price. And the 3-8 trap is actually set up on this chart, the 3 exponential moving average and the 8 exponential moving average. And then I'm going to change this to a weekly chart. So what we're looking for in, uh, in this strategy is we're looking for that crossover where we get the three crossing over the eight, and then we look for those little resting periods, those little periods in, the, um, in that uh, trade where that pulls back and relaxes and rests just a little bit. And it gives us those possible low risk entry points into that trade, and we can flip through all kinds of charts and see great pattern setups with the 3-8 trap. And it just goes on and on and on and on. Opportunities that can be made here in these trades. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> just with um, a simple chart like this and the ability to read <clears throat> that little bit longer term price action. Excuse me. Um, so if we look at this, look at these charts, do you guys, when I show you these charts, do you feel like, hey, I could probably make money with that chart? Is there anything about this chart that looks difficult or complicated or hard to understand and read? We see a trend. We see the three exponential moving average moving above the eight, staying up there. Every time we get these little resting periods or pullbacks, we see price action exploding back to the upside, and there's money to be made. And what what surprises people? <clears throat> um, yes, three exponential moving average and the eight exponential moving average. Yes, they're not the simple average; they're the exponential. And what surprises people the most when I see this, I can take any watch list, any stock list that you have, you can go through that and go, oh my gosh, how did I miss that trade? How did I miss all of these different uh, price action clues for so long in this chart? Sorry, I got all kinds of lines on here. But we see all of these beautiful trending charts. I don't want to take that little pink line off up, up there. That was actually alert. And so we see all these beautiful clean charts with these great trending patterns and think, man, oh man, how did I miss this? Well, one of the reasons we miss these kind of trades is we get a little bit too close to price. Yes, the three has to be above the eight, but I want to be clear here, Evelyn. It's not a crossover strategy. We're not looking for the crossover. 
We're looking for that rest or pullback where the three stays above the eight and gives us a low risk entry. And I'll explain that as we go along here. So let's take, let's use Costco here as an example. And I'm also gonna place a 17 EMA. Now, some folks might wanna try a 34 EMA if you like the little bit longer term trade. But I'm only putting that on there as the guideline of trend. We can clearly see when things cross over and where we have a nice consistent trend. It's not hard to see, it's not hard to read. You can choose to have that on there or choose to take it off. But once we have all of these three, we have really good signals for price support resistance. Beautiful price support right in here. Price resistance right in here when we failed. And trends that show themselves very clearly and possible entry points. So I'm going to turn price action back on on here so we can look at those candles. And what we're looking for is basically two patterns. The two patterns that I think are probably the easiest and the best to find, and they're the most common patterns in the market, is first a stock that's trending. And then I want to see that stock move up and either pull back to the trend, hold it and see buyers stepping in here. That's the normal peak and valley pattern that we see in a chart. Or I want to see that stock move up, consolidate over to trend, and then show me those buyers stepping in. So just with that tiny description, can you guys see chart setups in here that could have been very, very profitable and wouldn't have required really any prediction whatsoever. We don't have to predict the market. We don't have to do anything fancy here. As a matter of fact, what we want to do is keep things as simple as possible. Uh, Malcolm, no, um, I do know some position traders that will use like a three day chart to just get that little bit longer term period. OK, and then that little bit longer term period, sometimes there's advantages, sometimes there's disadvantages. To that, but if you want that little bit longer term, um, a three day, you know, if you could get a two and a half day, that would be great. But most charting things don't put together a two and a half day. But that gives you just kind of that that really nice swing swinging pattern for that longer term potential trade. Yeah, longer than a day uh, frame. I believe day day candles or or daily charts are really better suited for the full on swing trade where we're looking for those trades that are going to and it, it's pretty hard right now with the way the market is to get the market to get two days in one direction. But in, in a typical good bullish market, we get trades that go two, three, five, seven days in a row in a direction and that's what i look for for a swing trading chart on that daily so that little bit longer term gives me that smoothed out trend okay so i'm going to go back to the weekly here and show you two way, simple ways to find these trades so what we're going to do is we're going to look for that three crossing above the eight and staying there and then we're going to look for these patterns, these patterns where we get this nice little consolidation. Can anyone identify entry points in here? You could have identified this little resting period right in here. Remember, these are weekly candles. One, two, three, four weeks. Nice little tight consolidation. Bull, bullish candle popping up here, a potential entry point, and it's going to have a low risk entry. And the reason I say that is because your, your stop loss needs to be right underneath that support. It gives us that really clear low risk entry into the trade. And if you happen to miss it there, I want you to notice there's an entry here, an entry here, an entry here. There's <clears throat> more opportunity to get into that trade. But the fun thing about this is you can enter a position. Notice that right here using this weekly chart, let's say you catch, you didn't catch the first entry, maybe you catch this entry, okay? 
put an alert on the chart, catch that entry when that pops up there. Very clean 3-8 trap. And you can hold the trade with virtually no pressure in that trade from June through September. You would have a price increase in that chart from say 200, let's go a little bit higher, 205, 210 area up into here, 230, 240, 30 point move. Anybody think you can make money doing that? Now, if you combine this with a longer term option strategy, there's big money that can be made in those swings on that position trade. So let me zoom this up here really quick so that we can really see that close up. And what we're looking for is we're looking for these little dips or consolidations in the price action where we get that crossover and then we hold and then we see buyers stepping in. Now I call anything that's a four day tight consolidation like this, pop out of the box. I'm waiting for that pop out of the box. That's that little consolidating pattern. These right here, this is actually more of a mat hold pattern if you know your candlestick patterns, but we call this a PBO, a pullback opportunity. The stock rallied up, pulled back for two weeks, and then buyers stepped up right in here. And all it would have taken to identify that trade would have been placing a price alert across this area and waiting for the trade to come to us. Not trying to predict the trade, waiting for the trade to come to us. Okay. Now, if you choose to do this on a three-day chart, certainly doable. Let's make this a three-day chart and look in here, can we do that little bit shorter time frame and still find these entries into this trade? Yeah, we get this nice little consolidating move across here. There's that same entry. Here's this nice pullback opportunity right here. There's that entry. Beautiful, simple pullback opportunity entry in here. And these are, you know, three day candles, three, six, nine, 12, 15 day run. And then it went on up before you may have found a reason to take that profit or hold it a little bit longer and see after taking some profits in it, I would hope you take a few little bit of profit, holding it a little bit longer and then seeing if it can consolidate and continue to move higher. Okay, so this is a very clean, simple pattern with those pullback opportunities and those longer term trades. And one of the questions I get all the time is how do you put together a trade like this? What do you do? And folks at Right Way Options see me do this all the time. Um, I'm, I'm actually taking and putting price alerts on the chart. Those price alerts actually were set based on the daily and I was looking for the entry in this little pop out of the box. This nice little tight consolidation, I was looking for the entry into that trade. But notice if I go to a three day chart, those patterns are still there. We're just slowing it down. So we place those price alerts on the chart and we wait for those trades to occur, not predict them. We don't have to do anything fancy here. Now, does anyone in here have trouble knowing where to set your stop loss? If you have trouble with knowing where to set your stop loss, then what I would suggest <clears throat> is putting this indicator on the chart. I'm gonna give you the settings for it. Ten period 1.5 multiplier let me show you what happens when I turn this on the volatility stop helps us identify trend it helps us identify support and resistance 
in a chart. So if you're struggling with knowing where to place your stop losses, and you see this nice little price pattern right down here, by the way, I'm still on a three day, you see this nice little crossover, nice little pop out of the box pattern, we know that our stop loss needs to be right here, right underneath where that is. And then we can move this up. And by the way, this is a three day. So at the close of every three days, we move our stop loss up and follow this trend. Now, by the way, I always recommend that you're taking profits along the way. Okay, when you get a profit goal in this, say you have, uh, you know, 20% or something like that. If you're using options, you might take a 20% gain on the trade, close half of the trade and then trail the rest. Okay. Yeah, I jokingly called this the possum lodge indicator. <clears throat> okay, because at red green, the old red green show in the Possum Lodge. So as you can see, um, very, very um, simple to read. If I change this back to a weekly chart, notice how that price action helps us identify those stop loss areas in the chart. Well, I'll, I'll ask you, B, Chris, is it working or not? When you look at this pattern, I'm going to remove this back off. You tell me, is this working or not? It works. It works great. And see, the thing is, what you have to do, and, and I, I recommend this to everyone, is you need to go through your charts Well, <clears throat> if you're a true long-term trader, B. Chris, too many entries, you say? How many times have you looked at a chart and went, man, I missed the trade? Wouldn't you like to have another opportunity to enter that trade with following a set of rules rather than just guessing? Um, Brad, there certainly is. Let me give you. Go to my YouTube channel. I not only have a class on how to use the 3-8 trap, it's based on a daily on the YouTube channel. I also have a strategy that's very, very similar to if you like to use high Ashy candles. Okay. And you know, Aaron, that's really the truth. Um, Aaron's saying you don't really need the indicator to see the trades, and that is the truth. I trade, you guys know this, I trade a chart with no indicators on it. Okay, that's what I do. I trade a chart with no indicators. The reason I started showing this and teaching this is because it's not realistic for everyone coming to trading and not be, they just don't see the trades in the same way. So the 3-8 trap is designed to help them see help them draw their eyes to the right places or the best places for their entries. And after a period of time, you're right. If you get good at this, you no longer need the indicators. The trades so show themselves very well. Okay. <clears throat> you can't remember the oath. Oh man. Okay. Let's all bow our heads for the man's prayer. I am a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. <laughs> so take this take this strategy and apply it to some charts. Now here's what I'm here's what I'm suggesting. 
Guys, if the 3-8 isn't the perfect numbers for you, I want to tell you this. There's nothing magic about the 3-8. Nothing magic about it whatsoever. As a matter of fact, what if I remove the 3? Could we get the same kind of signal and patterns just using the 8 and the 17? Yeah. See, you can choose any two averages that you want. I'm using the 3.8 because it just works really, really well and conforms really, really well to the strategies that I like to trade. Those really simple, clean entry setups, and they're very easy to identify. It's been one of those strategies that, as I've been teaching this, and I, I will tell you this, guys, there are folks that have learned this from YouTube. There are folks that have learned this from me that send me emails for the first time they understand trading. For the first time, they're making consistent money in the market. But please understand, the three and the eight are not magical. You still have to look at that price pattern, right? I said it's not a crossing pattern. We're not looking for the, the crossover. We're looking for the rest, the consolidation. Now, what's good about that? How many of you spend your day trying to write the perfect scan only to find the trade and realize it's already too far gone? Can't trade the trade now because it's moved too much. Right? <clears throat> the 3 8 trap is designed to give you time for the trade, to plan. When we see these little pullbacks occurring in a beautiful trend, all we have to do is watch this pattern and say, you know, if a stock breaks above there, I want to know. Place an alert on the chart and make the trade come to you. Now, I want you to understand, using a weekly chart, this is three weeks. <clears throat> well, I can tell you, B. Chris, it works in every market and it works on every time frame. I've got folks in right way options right now trading the 3 8 trap on 15 minutes, making more money than they made a long time just trading a 15 minute chart using the 3 8. It will work on every time frame. Okay. Again, it's not about the magic of the 3 8. It's it just helps draw you to the to the place where the trades could occur. Okay? Let's take a look at this Roku. Oops. Take a look at this Roku. Does this bring you into good potential trades? Anyone think you could have caught this right in here? There's that little downtrend, little breakthrough resistance. There's the entry in your trade. We want the three staying above the eight. We don't want the three crossing down below the eight and crossing back up. This is not a crossing strategy. So over here, there is no trade. At the current time, there is no trade. What we need now after this push back up is we need that resting pullback to provide us with that low risk entry into the trade. Okay. So very, very simple. Very, very clean, very easy to read. And if you want those longer term trades, please remember, you don't have to use the weekly. If you use a three day chart or something like that, it works just the same way. Provides the same kind of entries into the trade. There's gonna be more noise, more back and forth. But honestly, how hard was it to see this little entry right in here? Pretty darn simple, right? Okay. <clears throat> 
So let's take a look. Um, I'm just going to look at a few other charts in here. I'm going to go back to my weekly. Let's put this, um, let's look at Target. Target is jumping and hopping and everything all over the place. So for me in here, there's no trade in here. Needed a different tool. There's no trade in here. There is a beautiful entry here. Okay, so one of the critical things to make this useful to you guys is you have to be patient for the trade. That's a hard thing for a lot of people to learn in their trading. Folks in right way options know this. I trade less than a lot of people in the room and I tend to make a lot more money. And it's not because I have more money because I've been doing this for so long. It's because I'm very picky about the trades that I take. I have no desire to gamble in the market. I try to remove the gambling by looking at good solid patterns that repeat themselves over and over and over. Until that pattern occurs, I don't trade. Okay, I'm looking for consistency. I'm not trying to be a hero. Okay. <clears throat> so when you look around through charts and you look around, what we want to look for is we want to look for those charts that have that nice consistent trend. Imagine had you looked at MasterCard using this chart and got into some of these trades. This is a weekly. Let's make it a three day. Or how about Shopify? For that matter, Walmart. Okay. <clears throat> I know, B. Chris, we're not talking about today. We're talking about the price patterns themselves. So the fact that MasterCard, you know, tanked today really doesn't make any difference to what we're talking about, except the fact that what we're showing right here could be a potential setup for a short trade. It works just as well for trades that are moving lower. Okay, just as good for trades moving lower. <clears throat> REV, um, I don't know. Look at REV. No, not on a weekly it would not have. On a daily, plenty of opportunities on the daily. The daily, beautiful 3-8 trap setups here. One right now. But on the weekly, this is just zooming up and there's no pullback entry into that trade. So I wouldn't be trading this on a long term. Okay. I want those nice, simple trades, those easy trades that I can hold for a period of time. Now, let's take this over. I was asked to talk a little bit about ETFs. Can you use this? trading ETFs. Let's take a look at XLU. Is there good money being made here trading a simple ETF with this easy to read pattern? Okay. Lots of opportunity here, right? So this transfers to any stock or anything, and you can transfer this, if, again, if you don't like the weekly, go to a time frame that you like. 
If you prefer a two day, fine, trade a two day. These are a little bit longer term and provide you nice potential entries into the trade. You don't have to, I'm not committing you to any weekly or whatever. This will work on any time frame. Okay. But the idea of position trading is to have a few of those trades that you can hold for a long period of time, a longer period of time. You don't have to have super, super long years and stuff like that into the trade, but they can exist. They can happen. Okay, I want to show you um, a trade that happened quite some time ago on a weekly chart back here in Disney. Got to zoom this up over here. And I want you to see that this was a trade that I was in for four years. Four years. using a simple strategy to find these entries into trades. Okay, let's take a look at Microsoft. You guys think you could have traded and made some money in Microsoft? I do both, Brad. I, I trade mostly options, but I do trade um, stock <clears throat> as well. And it all depends on what I'm planning to do with the trade. I told everyone that would listen that I was buying Walmart. Let me show you here. I've even got it marked. That was my entry right there into Walmart. I've traded this with stock and I've traded this with options at the same time. I've hedged the stock trade with options the whole time. I'm in this trade in the set low 70s. Okay, and now you can see where we are. Okay, this is an actual trade I'm holding. Folks, Folks in right way options saw me on Home Depot using basically this strategy take ten thousand dollars out of Home Depot over here. Using options. Okay, simple three A trap. No trick to that whatsoever to get into that trade. Lots of these trades have been around us, but we're not slowing down enough to see them. We're racing around. We're not taking the time to look at the charts and investigate the charts. And as a matter of fact, I think a lot of folks just don't even have a plan. Yeah, well, of course it can, Sheldon. It's a three exponential moving average, an eight exponential moving average, and a 17 exponential moving average. It can be set up anywhere. And it can literally be traded on any time frame. Uh, uh, seriously, guys, let's take this to, let's go to the diamonds. Take a look at a 15 minute chart. Does this work on a 15 minute chart? How many trades in here? Beautiful long trades, easy short trades. All through this chart. Any time frame. You choose your time frame. Choose how you um, <clears throat> want to follow this pattern. What I will tell you is if you decide to trade the really short term patterns, you can't focus on too many charts. You can't be chasing around too many things. I have people that ask me, well, well, what about what about a, a five minute chart? Can I can I use a five minute? Well, of course you can. These are just moving averages, guys. There's nothing magic about these moving averages. You take a chart like FZZ on a 15 minute chart, easy entries into this trade. 
all day long. Change it into a five minute chart, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, shorting you use the same rules. When we short, we look for that failure. We don't, it's not the crossover. Remember, we're not looking for the crossover. So if we're looking for a short trade here in the diamonds, we wait for that crossover to occur, wait for the rally back, and here's the 3-8 trap short right here. The reason that is the trade is because this is a low risk entry. That's why I don't chase this, because this requires predicting and generally gives me a higher risk on the entry in the trade. This doesn't require any predicting. Just simply following. This is a five minute chart. Okay? Not that difficult right? Any time frame that you want to choose to trade. But if you like, if you want to build that lifestyle of that shorter, or excuse me, that little bit longer term trading, you can do that with this same strategy. Look over here in 2017, when we just had this beautiful rising market. Now let me zoom this in here on the diamonds. Could you have made money here on the diamonds? With this strategy, pretty easy, right? Let's look at some other things, talking about ETFs and those kind of things. What about things like TLT? Could you make money with TLT here? What about energy? Maybe an XLE? Is there, yeah, there's a pretty good short trade right in here. Other than that, pretty choppy over here right now. Probably nothing in here that I would have traded on the weekly. Let's take this to a three day, see if there's trade setups that clean up. Pretty good short trade right here. Good short trades here. Pretty decent long trades, but pretty choppy overall. So XLE, probably not the best example of a trade. We want to look for those stocks that have that smooth consistency in their price, uh, price action. That's what we're looking for is that nice, clean um, moving chart. Okay. So as we look around, how about bonds? Weekly, three day, two day, <clears throat> daily. Can you make money with this? Pick your time frame and the strategy that you want to trade. <clears throat> The reason I'm talking about the position trade is that's what folks were asking for. They were asking for that longer term strategy and how we can utilize this little bit longer term chart. But using the exact same strategy that we've been teaching um, over the last couple of weeks, few weeks on um, the 3A trap, just moving that out to that longer term chart. Okay. Now, once again, everyone, um, <clears throat> I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, a really long time. Um, trading basically two patterns in the market, and that is no joke. I trade that nice little tight consolidation, and I trade the pullback opportunity trade in a trending chart. And I just do that over and over and over. Okay. Well, it all depends on what you're what you're trying to to do, NP. If you're using a longer term trade, 
Okay. If you're thinking longer term, you want to get into these trades. And then as the trade moves up, even what I do as the trade moves up, I even loosen up my stop because I have such a big profit in the trade. I just let the chart move around. I never know how long these can go. But when I start getting failures and breakdowns of support levels and things like that, or crossovers, three crossing down through the eight, I want to close this trade. It's really, really simple if you use the volatility stop on this, where we want to place our stop loss, where we want to follow. You'd have been stopped out right here on that trade. Bam, you're done. All through here, there was no chance that you got stopped out. So all of 2019, up until right here, you would have been stopped down on the trade. I manually move my stops. I don't use trailing stops, Brad, um, except for really fast moving stocks on daily charts and things like that. Um, I don't use much for trailing stops. One of the places I do use trailing stops is you know, let's say you get into a, a trade on a, on a daily swing trade and the next morning it gaps up and it's trying to run. Well, most people will spend the rest of their day watching that candle wiggle around in there. I don't have that kind of time. Um, in my opinion, once that is in a profit, I've won on the trade. I'm done with that trade. Now move on and find the next trade. So if I have that really fast mover that gaps up in the morning, I'll do one of two things. As soon as it gaps up, I just take profit and I'm done. If I think it's going to run a little further, I set a, a trailing stop and I let the trailing stop take me out. I'm done looking at it. I got to move on. Okay. But those are about the only times I use trailing stops. I want to use the price action of the chart itself for my stops. Or... <clears throat> What I teach, and you guys will find this in my videos, is uh, on YouTube. Here, let me give you that link again. Is you should have some kind of a profit target in mind. A plan where you're going to exit some of your trades. You know, I've got, I've got a couple folks that are trading very small profit margins. They're, they're trying to trade intraday charts. And they're looking at taking 10% profits on the trade. Just moves up 10%, they're out of the trade. Okay. You know, some of these folks are reporting 75, 76, 70 plus percent win-loss ratios doing that. Let me ask you guys a question. Is it easier to find a stock that will move up 10%? I'm talking an option. Move up 10% than it is to find a stock that'll move at 50%? Much easier, right? It's easier to find those short moves, those really quick, where it just moves up and you grab those, that, those profits. Okay? And they're hitting really high win-loss ratios on that. Now, let me ask you guys, if you set a profit target in a trade. Stock moves up and you take a 15 to 20% profit on a longer term trade using an option. Enter this position down here, get a 15 to 20% gain on the trade and take part of the trade off a of profit and then just relax and trail the rest. Just follow that up. You've done your job, you've made your money. Is, is anyone here, can anyone here tell me that you're going to go broke if you make a consistent 15 to 20% on trade? And you can do that almost 70% of the time. If I have a, if I'm in a position, if I'm thinking about a long-term trade, Brad, let me give you an exact example. Microsoft, let me go to this chart. There was an actual entry for right-way options into Microsoft. 
we bought a January option that had 400 and some days. It was a leap option. And all the way through this up move, we were selling calls against this. We ended up getting called away clear over here in August. Okay. So the better part of a year, we got in it in December of 2016. We carried that all the way through into August. Okay, and we made just short of 100% return on the trade. Now, if you, we got called away and that's why we had such a good premium on the short strike that we sold. I said, just let's just let them take it. And then we traded some more as this continued to move up. But let's think about what you could do if you have that trade and it's getting close to expiration. What I normally do, Brad, on that is I'm buying an option. I'm always buying an option, even for a longer term trade. I'm buying an in the money option somewhere between about 70 and 80 deltas. Now, I'll tell you for a longer term trade, and I'll, I'll tell you honestly, when we entered this trade, it was a 67 delta. So it wasn't quite 70. Okay. But what I will typically do, and you probably know this if you've traded this very long, when a stock rolls up, moves up in price, the closer and closer you get to about 90 deltas in the trade, it gets harder and harder for that option to make money, right? Because the market makers spread the bid ask out. They widen it up. They make it harder and harder for you to make money. So it can be a time element that triggers the roll, or it can be an option pricing element that triggers the roll. Okay, so we will roll a trade when it starts reaching up into that area, taking a profit on the trade, rolling it up and out. And it can be based on time or it can be based on the pricing of those options and how they spread out that bid ask for us, okay? Now, I, one of the easier trades to trade with an option, I think, is just finding that long-term setup, buying that long-term option, letting the chart move up. And when we get you get that point where it's gonna get a little bit of pullback, a little bit of rest, sell some out of the money call options against it, bring some nice premium in, get paid while you're waiting for it to continue in its trend, and just let that continue to move. It's a pretty simple trade. <clears throat> um, Al, what happens if you look at option chains Market makers, think about it. Market makers don't want you to be at a point where you're making one-to-one -one for a stock move. And what you'll see is as you approach those 90 deltas, all they do is they open up the bid-ask spreads. You can still make money, but it's harder. Okay? They open those bid-ask spreads. You're giving up some of your leverage on the trade. They continue to just widen them out and widen them out. making it hard to make a lot of money on the trade. So what I normally do when I reach up in there close to those 90s or into those 90s, I will sell that 90 delta option, buy back at 70 deltas, okay? Taking a profit as I'm doing it, stay long the trade, and then just roll, just keep rolling those up and out. And if I have to go out a few more months or whatever to give me the time I need on that, I just keep rolling it. And by the way, I'm taking profits when I do that. You know, for example, let's say you buy this down here at nine bucks. Whoops, she's not even dyslexic there, I can't write. Let's say you buy this down here at $9. This rolls up into here, and now that option is worth 14. Okay? And you're running out of time. Okay? Sell this option and pick up another option that's somewhere, in, you know, this is going to be up in that 90 delta area. 
buy another option that's down here around nine, somewhere in that 70 delta range, nine or 10 bucks, and give yourself more time for the up move and let that roll up toward that 90 deltas as well. Yeah, when you when you get up in there, you'll just we'll just watch, just look at any option chain. And once they get up in that area, they just start opening it up. They make it pretty tough to make money on them. If I'm buying um, options, um, if I'm buying long-term options, I want to plan um, that trade. So you could look out and say, hey, I'm looking at this weekly chart. I think this may be the way the stock has moved. It has three months in it. Start with something that's got 90 days to expiration or 120, depending on where those options land. Or you could do just move right on out and get a longer term. So for example, I was looking at AT&T the other day. Let me um, clean up all these lines. I'm looking at this nice little setup right here. And I looked out to the January 2021 contracts. Okay, January, January 2020 contracts. And also look for those um, places where everybody's going, Brad. You know, you can, you can say, well, I want a three-month option, but you look at the three-month option and you look in there, nobody's trading them. There's no open interest. Don't trade those. If you have to go out further to find where everybody's trading them, where all the open interest is, go there. Because the bid-ask spreads will be tighter, you'll get a better deal. Okay. So I was looking around, and, and, and here, I'll just show you. If you go to T and go out here to January 2021, look at the open interest in these contracts right here. There's a lot of interest in AT&T that far out. If you go shorter term, if you go to, you know, something in here, let's look at this Junes. There's open interest in here, but not near as strong. So by going that little bit further, notice I'm not paying that much more money for this trade and I have 450 days of potential gain in this. Okay. AT&T is one of those. And one of the reasons, you know, it caught a big upgrade, you know, somebody putting a big price target up there in the 60s. Um, and that's one of the reasons it started to move up and started to look pretty good. One of the places that I look for these um, longer term trades, guys, is I look for stocks that have been beat down. Stocks that I know probably aren't going to go away, but have been really, really beaten down. Take a look at a stock like ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil, look how long this thing has been going down. Now, I don't know when this will come back up, and I don't know if it will but I know I can wait for it. So I wait for that stock to turn around and show me that uptrend, and then I look for those trades to occur. Okay, stocks like 3M that have been pounded down and pounded down and pounded down, because I can tell you, I made a bucket load of money on 3M over here when it finally corrected out of this pattern. So I have to be patient, I have to wait for those trades to occur.
So I look at those stocks that have just been beat down and beat down and beat down and they're underloved and underloved and underloved. And then they start to turn around. They start to shape up. The price action gets better. Okay. We were looking at SQ the other day for a potential, just a standard swing trade because it had popped up, but it's failed. Now, and you can see on this longer term chart, if you're looking for a short trade on a weekly, that is a beautiful short trade setup on SQ. But when we get through these periods, those bad periods, we get these nice run-ups that can occur. Remember when Microsoft, nobody liked Microsoft? Nobody cared about Microsoft. Microsoft languished here forever, did nothing. Then it corrected itself. You can do the same thing with shorter term charts. Everyone in right way options knows that when I called this in Lily, I said, watch for this breakout here. As a matter of fact, if I go to a daily chart, you will see that there's a price alert right about there on the chart. Anyone in RWO confirm that? So they know I'm not just telling stories. But I actually said, guys, pay attention to this. When this pops, it could really run. The longer a stock gets held down or goes sideways, the bigger the potential move that it can make. Okay, here's a chart I'm watching right now for the exact same thing. Big resistance area, rising lows. What do you think could happen to O'Reilly if this pops out of here? Those are great trades and they're easy to identify. They're easy to find. Okay. That's right, Brad. That's that's what I'm talking about. And, and again, if you want to use a little bit different moving averages, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that there's a comparison between the two. Okay, you know, a time difference between the two that helps you identify those little bit of those places where we get that little bit of a pinch, that little bit of a um, simple um, trade setup. Okay. Choose one time frame. And I really want to harp on this a little bit until you really get good at the 3 8 trap. I would recommend you pick one time frame and practice it. I talk about this a lot. I can show you guys how to do this. But if you don't practice that, this, you won't be any good at it. Remember, we're competing with everyone else in the market. We're competing with the institutions. We're competing with our computers. Okay, so we have to be a little bit sharper on the patterns that we trade. We have to be very clear. I do an awful lot of coaching. As a matter of fact, there's not one day this week that I'm not doing private coaching with folks. Okay, and they're from all over the world. And it doesn't matter to me what time frame they want to trade, but I require them to practice it. Open up a paper trade account. Now, people will say, well, I've been trading a long time. I don't have to trade a paper trade account. You really need to trade a paper trade account. And the reason I say that is because you've got a lot of bad habits to break. Okay? This is such a simple strategy, it's easy to overcomplicate it. Right? I get that question almost every day. Well, what if I add this to it? Would it? Well, what if I do this? Well, what if I... Okay, but every time you add something to this, every time you try to overcomplicate it, 
you've taken something simple and turned it into something that makes it very, very difficult to read. Okay. So we have to keep our trading simple and get very, very good at just a few patterns. Don't try to be the master of all of them. Work to be the best that you can at a couple patterns, and that's all you need to do to be successful in trading. Okay. Fifty and the two hundred um, are, you know, very very common moving averages that everybody watch. And, and you guys know I have a chart right here that's just the our fifty two hundred, our thirty four. I also have the eight exponential, and I'm always watching those. But here's the thing that I want to point out. Okay. Did it require you to do that to make money here in O'Reilly? Did it require you to do that to make money in Visa? No, it's not a have to. Remember, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to follow the market. We're not trying to predict the market. Okay. No prediction here required. In fact, I always caution people in the room. People will say, well, this stock's going to rip tomorrow. And I said, well, wow, where did you get your crystal ball? How, how, how's that working for you? We don't know what happens tomorrow. Stop predicting and just work to follow a chart. You know, the re why do char charts trend? Why do charts trend? Do charts trend because of retail traders? Less is right. No. Charts do not trend because of retail traders. If all the retail traders got together, they couldn't move some of these big stocks. There's not enough money. It's the big institutions that decide the trends. It's the big institutions that allow the stock to trend and continue to support it with all of that 401k money, all of those mutual fund monies, all of those things like that. They determine the trend. Our job is to stop predicting and start following. When they're proving that they can support a stock and they continue to support a stock, we better pay attention and just follow it. It's the easiest thing to do. Okay. Institutions decide when a stock is done going down and when it starts coming up. And all we have to do is wait for them. If we let them give us the signal, all we have to do is follow. That's exactly right, Jim. When they start taking profits, we better pay attention, not fall in love with the stock. We better pay attention and exit that trade. Okay. Oh man, me for, me over the World Series. Jeez, Tim, thank you very much. You can give me a big head. <laughs> but seriously, guys, that's the important thing. And, and that's what so many people are missing in the market. They're racing around trying to predict everything. They're watching CNBC that's trying to pump up this stock or this stock and it's always somebody talking their own book they don't care about your money just wait and watch and see when those institutions turn things around and then follow that trade just wait for the next entry into the trade 
This took me forever to figure this out. Guys, I went through the same problems that you went through. Years and years of struggle. Years and years of probably thinking, well, not probably. I was close to quitting. And I started cleaning up my chart from all of that junk that I kept learning over the years. Adding this and adding that and adding this and adding that to the point I couldn't even see the price action of the chart. I was frozen in my trading. I couldn't do anything. And when I started cleaning up the chart, I thought, well, how in the world did I miss these trades? These are simple to see. But I was wasting all of my time trying to predict them rather than just following them. And when I finally learned that and got simple in my trading, it changed my life. It changed my life. It can change your life too. Get simple in your trading. Put together a simple trading plan. Practice it until it's hard, to, it's hard for you to break it. And what I mean by that, you know, you can practice. I could go out and practice day and night for the next two years. I'll never make it on a professional football field. Okay? But they can't come over here into my world and spend two weeks in a class and think they can compete with me. Does that make sense, guys? We have to practice until we are the best that we can be at that strategy that we've chosen. And we can't be perfect on every strategy in the world. We can't do it. There's not enough time. We can't have that kind of focus. It distracts us. We chase around all of these little shiny things all the time. And all we really have to do is follow the price action. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've probably had a concussion or two, Tim, from banging my head against the wall trying to figure this stuff out. <laughs> I spent a lot of time pounding my head against the wall. <laughs> But if you just take the time to focus on the price action of the chart, focus on a simple strategy and apply it effectively every time. Don't second guess things. This is something that always drives me nuts. Well, I can't enter that trade. Why can't you enter that trade? Well, that's gone up so far. It's, it's got to come down. Okay, where's that rule written? Anybody, anybody show me a rule book where that's written? It's gone up so far it has to come down? No. That's a self-implied self baloney. Okay. If that were true... How could have I held BDX from 2013 all the way through up to here? Who says it has to come down? It's not true. We have to wait for the price action to tell us that it's shifting direction. That all of a sudden the institutions have lost support for it. Until then... We don't know anything except the trend. Let's follow the trend. Does that make sense, guys? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Isn't that the truth? I caught myself on this, um, you know, in 2008 on the big crash. Everything fell apart. No, it wasn't 2008. It was before that. I can't remember what whatever date it was before that that... We had the, I, maybe it was 2008. Anyway, um, Apple went down to like 83 bucks. 
Well, it had gone down below 83 bucks, but I bought it at 83 bucks because it came up and, and and did well. And then it rallied up to 200. I told everybody, "Hey, this is going up. It, it should go to 200." That's that was the last high. Rallied up to 200 and then guess what I did? It's got to come down. I sold it. Do you know how hard it is to get back into a trade after that point? It's really hard. How many of you guys have ever sold the trade and said, well, I'll just get back into it next time, and you never find a way to get back into that trade? Just follow the trend. Just follow the trend. Let the institutions do the work. They've got the money. It's their market. All we can do is tag along. We're not even, we don't even amount to a flea on their hind end. They don't care whether we make money. They don't care whether we lose money. But when they start moving a stock or a trend or a market, we need to be paying attention to that and just follow the trend. Okay. Well, guys, I hope you got something out of this tonight. I mean, I can preach on for hours and hours and hours. Um, but what I want to, what I would like you to do is if you guys could do me a favor, if you like this tonight, I'd like you to do me a favor. I'd like you to go over to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Click on that and become a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, I post this video will eventually be put over there on YouTube for you guys to see again. Okay. Might take me a few days. It'll be over there. And you can learn all of these simple strategies that I've used to do that. And I want to do one more thing. Um, I don't know if anyone's got... Anyone have the link for the 50% off? Um, Ed, are you listening? You might have that. I, I don't know why I was looking here and I don't have it in front of me. Um, what, I want, what I want to say is if anyone wants to give the service a try, okay, what we're doing right now, we've got a special on anybody coming in new or whatever, they can get into the service, right way options, and if you use this promo code, save 50, you get 50% off right now um, off of the service. Okay. And it's not just like if you go in and get a monthly membership that it's not just this month. It's for as long as you maintain the service, you'll keep that price. Okay. Now I'm not here to say anything. Honestly, I'm not. Um, if, if you have no interest in that, if you want to check us out a little bit more, great. Got no problem with that. If you want to come to a few more of these free events that we do, great. Love to see you here and help you as much as we can to be a better trader. Okay. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. By the way, that works on the monthly, the quarterly, the annual, whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah. And guys like Aaron, Aaron is in our room. Um, Aaron's been around for quite a, quite a while. He's a heck of a trader. And one of the great benefits of the room is not me. One of the great benefits of the room is we have a lot of trained traders now in that room pointing out stocks. Suggest, hey guys, I just got into this. Hey guys, I, every day there's profits being made from the members of our room. And we've got all of these trained eyes looking at the market. There's been that talk, Jackie, but no, I haven't really considered that. Maybe we should, but haven't considered that yet. So guys, I want you to I want you to just take the time and think about 
how you can improve your trading, how a little bit of practice, a little bit of thought, you could improve your trading dramatically. And I'm not talking about next year or 10 years down the road. I'm talking about a simple strategy that can turn you around by the end of the year. And you can start seeing those nice, consistent profits coming in your trade. I am not promising you you're going to win every trade. Okay? That is not real trading. You're going to lose trades. What we're after is more winners than losers and the consistency that that brings to your account. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who's lifetime? <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you very much for being here tonight. I appreciate it a ton. Everyone, take care of yourselves. Have a great evening.